G'day guys, Troy K here and have we got a special guest for you. We've got Romulus Whitaker in town promoting the upcoming Scars and Tails Educational Reptile Expo. While he's in town, he's had the day off and we've been able to sneak him over to our boy Chris Smith's place to play with some vents. This should be pretty educational today guys because this guy, this guy knows a heap. <laughs> so Rom's used to working with the King Cobras over in India. We thought we'd get the, one of the kings of Australian venomous out, and that's the King Brown. Easily, um, easily the biggest, biggest venom yield that uh, that we get here in Australia is out of this one here. And what are your what are your first thoughts, Rom, on a snake on a snake like this? Yeah, well, I had the luck of being at the Australian Reptile Park when they're extracting venom from the mulga, and uh, I've never seen a venom yield anywhere equal to that, anywhere near it. Even a big king cobra, okay, 10 ml if you're lucky, and you know that you think, God, 10 ml. But seeing the little glass filling up when they were extracting venom there, that was something else. These are these are also one of Australia's heaviest, aren't they, Chris? Yeah, the heaviest land snake we've got here in Australia. Yeah. yeah. Um, pretty much on par with the coastal dive things on length as well, which yeah. is impressive when they do get big. And it's just a gorgeous snake though, man. All right, well, let's get this one back and we'll get out another one. So, Ron, have you had the pleasure of meeting a coastal taipan yet? Well, I haven't. Started. I haven't. Papuan taipan, yes. yes. Luckily, I was in Papua New Guinea for a couple of years and I did see them there. But this, uh, no, coastal taipan, I don't know anything about him. I've got great, great respect for him. Well, this one's, this one's one of Australia's largest venomous snakes. No, um, no king cobra, but definitely deserves the respect. Uh, how, how big do these guys get, Chris? Uh, the reports are three meter monsters, but I think uh, about eight foot's the average length. Um, and obviously this is an average snake, but the size of the head is where, where um, the trouble is. Yeah. The size of the fangs, they protrude out the bottom of their jaws, which is, can just um, offer a pretty bad ending if you're head grabbing them as well. Oh really? Without knowing Even if what you're doing? doing? Yeah. Oh, wow. um, and uh, yeah, third most venomous snake in Australia, uh, in the world, sorry. So, and with the they're a muscular snake, so handling them, um, you try and be as gentle as possible because they're really, really twitchy and they've got the uh, opportunity, when they t they'll take the opportunity when they get it to just fly at your face and shoulders and chest. Yeah. Like 90% of coastal taipan bites are to the chest. Right. Yeah. yeah. So people say, you know, there's all sorts of things where you should wear shoes, you should wear garters, you should wear jeans. Yeah. But if you're getting bitten on the legs, you're doing something seriously wrong. You know? Yeah, but when you're talking about bites, are you talking about people who handle them? Or are people you talking about people just walking People out grabbing them. Um, okay, yeah. Um, messing with them, trying to kill them. Yeah, right. Um, okay, like, yeah. They'll charge and get you in the groin, no worries, um, from the ground level, regardless of you handling them. Wow. And the King Cobra, what's, what's the average length there? Uh, average length of a male is about 3 to 3.5 meters. Right. Yeah, yeah. Like 12, 14 feet long is, is not unusual for a big male. And the females are considerably smaller, about 2 to 2.5 meters, less than 3 meters. But that's in our area. There are other parts of uh, the King Cobra's range where they're not, they don't grow as big. And there's some that are in Thailand that grow even much bigger, you know, 5 meters plus. So. Yeah, now they're the longest in the world, is they that are. right? The yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, there's just so many things about King Cobra. It's not just the biggest, the only snake that makes a nest. It's totally a snake eater, but it eats guanas, it eats uh, monitor lizards as well. Which the, kind of, yeah. The nest, how, how tall are we talking with the nest? Um, they make a pretty big nest. We've seen nests uh, almost a meter tall and two meters in diameter. And uh, we've watched them making the nest and it just takes ages. It takes a week or 10 days for her to sweep up all the leaves. But it's, it's such an intelligent process, you know, she's making a beautiful waterproof mound of leaves. She lays the eggs down inside, they, they're absolutely dry, but the humidity is high because there's rain all around. But during the na rainy season, she's sitting on or inside the nest, hanging around. Uh, basically, they say to defend it, and, and it does work if a water monitor or, or a wild pig or something comes by. It'll scare the hell out of him if she comes out there and spreads yeah. her head and <laughs> makes a bit of a growl. You know? 
Uh, Rom, so here we have the number one in the world, the Yinlin Taiping. Now, Smith, what can you tell us about this bad boy? Well, most tourists and um, perp folk like, like Rom and uh, a lot of people from the States, they come over, they want to see this snake, they want to see the fierce snake. Um, the most dangerous snake in the world, but it's not, like right? It's the most venomous snake. But really, they live in the smallest um, part of Australia, right in the middle of um, the outback, the desert, basically, where Queensland and Northern Territory meet. Yeah. Um, and they live in the black soil cracks, and they basically only come up after the wet season. Um, their food source is very limited out there, mm -hmm. so they're toxic. Their venom has to be so toxic, so when they do find food, sure they make sure it. they get it. Yeah. But and you've got the big four over there, haven't you? Well, we've got a lot of body snakes. You guys have a lot more deaths over yeah, here than, than we have here in Well, Australia. it's a combination of a lot of factors. We've got massive population, but uh, it's the, the, the fact is that rats are, you know, something attractive to humans everywhere. And over there, the rice fields and the huts and villages attract rats. And snakes are coming for food, mainly. How's people. education? How's education over there in India? Oh, it's getting good. It's getting. We're getting better and better, but we still got 45,000 people dying of snake bite every year. So we're talking yeah. about a serious problem. And uh, education is a very big part of it, but uh, also a very big part is getting the doctors to be tuned in to exactly how the treatment should go. Uh, get people, wean people away from the old traditional remedies and say, look, you've got to get antivenom. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know it works very well in Australia and everyone's aware of it and there's hardly a death here. Yep. Mainly because people get to that treatment when they have to, you know, right away. Now, you've got a, you've got a, a century, is, is it a century? What? Yeah, I'm going to say this wrong. I'm oh, not. <laughs> uh, a bumbu? No. A gumbe. A gumbe. A gumbe. A gumbe Rainforest Research Centre, is that yeah. that's the place? Yeah, and, it is. And what are you guys researching over there? What are you well, saying? We, we started because of Any King bit? Cobras, because of my absolute obsession with King Cobras. So we started the radio telemetry project way back when. Right. And the Whitley Fund for Nature in England, I mean, thank God they came through with a some funds to actually set up the place right. and uh, good work yeah <laughs> and we've uh, done quite a few things since then we've got wildlife biologists coming from all over to come and stay in the park their very first time their first experience it's a comfortable place to stay it's easy to do their research compared to you know trying to camp in a tent and live in the middle of jungle yeah you know watching out for elephants and whatnot. <laughs> so uh, yeah it's, it's working really well and, and we're really getting somewhere and we're finding out about King Cobras their secret lives, which is just fascinating. And you've got trackers in, what, even the King Cobras, have you got radio trackers in yeah, there? And yeah, we've, we've, we've had a project going since 2008, and we only had four to start with. We're doing another four starting this year. And basically the first thing to find out was what, what's the whole problem with translocation? Because King Cobras are being rescued in people's houses and then taken, was released in the forest, sometimes 20, 30 kilometers away. Well, we did find out in a limited way that they go through hell then, they don't know where the hell they are. They try to home back, they can't home back. They haven't got places where they know they can rest and sleep. They don't know where to find food, they don't know where to find water. So snakes do have a territory that we found established the fact that the king cobras have a territory. And I, I kind of like the idea of using the king cobra as the example of, of snake research in the wild. It's a big one, you can watch its behavior very easily. And you're finding out stuff that's probably broadly applicable to snakes all over, including your Australian elapids. You know? Fascinating stuff. Really good stuff. Uh, Rom, so this is Australia's largest python. This one, the Australian scrub python. What sort of what sort of length are we talking? Bruce? Uh, I think the average is four to five meters, but there's rumours of eight. Mm -hmm. But if five meters is an impressive animal. Yeah. To me, it, it's it's a beautiful snake. It, it's a very lean python compared to the Indian, the fat Indian rock yeah, python. Yeah. Exactly. So, well, um, what have been some of your highlights while well, in Australia, quickly, before we get going? Well, everything's a highlight in Everything? Australia, man. It's all brand new to me, but I've seen so many different elapids just in the last two weeks that we've been here. My mind is still sort of... Ah, it's <laughs> all been beautiful, though. Good stuff. I found my first tiger snake in the wild, so... I'll take that off the list. <laughs> now, you managed to go over some of this in a podcast with Steve, Stephen Castell from Scars and Tales, yeah. is that right? Yeah, we did. We talked on and on for hours. Hours. <laughs> All right, guys, don't forget to check that one out. They'll be at scarsandtales.com.au. Uh, and, um, yeah, just let me remind you that the Madras Crocodile Bank and Centre for Herpetology that we have down in southeast India, a city called Chennai, 
Yep. Uh, we're doing something with YouTube there as well. And there's a there's a website, madrascrocodilebank.com. So yep. check it out. Yeah. Madras, say it again. Mad Madras Crocodile Bank. We call Madras. it a bank rather than a park. Yeah, Madras is Madras. the old name of the city. <laughs> But uh, yeah, Madras, M-A-D-R-A-S. All right, guys, you've heard it. Don't forget to keep an eye out for it. Uh, and we hope, hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you so much for coming on, Rom. Thank you. Thanks, mate. Thanks for having us, nice, Chris. Mate. Wonderful. Thanks, guys. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs>